Wondering if there's a way to measure your fitness as you get older, just where you are compared to your peers? Yeah, I mean, there is a clinically accepted or a few clinically accepted ways that doctors, physiotherapists, physical therapists, rehab specialists, they do these things to check how fit you are. Okay, welcome to Talking With Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Wynn. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna talk about a bunch of the different tests, how they're done, why they matter, and how they can help predict your risk of things like falls, hospitalization, frailty, and even death. Right, and, and why prepping for these tests might not help you. There you go. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. Share Listen, with friends. Call well, to action. Call to action. We're close to a million subscribers. It's, a, it's becoming an asymptote to it. Yes. We're getting close, but we're not getting there. Right. Can you people out there please help us get to a million subscribers? We're almost there. Okay. We want to have a party once we get there. Okay, we will. All right, so what are some of these, what are some of these tests? There's quite a few. Yep. My favorite one would be some form of the sit to stand test. Okay. Okay. It's basically where you're sitting in a standard chair with no arms. You put your arms. You have no arms? No, I have arms. Oh. The chair has no arms. That would be an odd test if it's just no. for people with no but arms. But you could still do this if you have no arms. Right. Because you're not allowed to use your arms to get up. Ironically, those people probably would do better at this test. I'm not sure. I think they would. So you put your arms across your chest if you have them. Yep. And you stand up. Okay. Right. And there's a few variations of this test. The first one is called the five times sit to stand test. Okay. So basically you do it five times and time how long it takes. Okay. The second version, because some people can't do it five times. Right. They're so, too weak. So they get an inconclusive test. Right. So they have another one where you sit in a chair and get up to stand and we see how many times you can do it in 30 seconds. Okay. Just do your best. Yeah. Okay. And then the other one is the same, but see how many times you can do it in one minute. Okay. Now you can try these tests at home, okay? But be careful if you're not if you don't have good balance, have someone around to help you so you don't fall when you do this depending on your level of fitness, but you put the chair against the wall for stability and just stand up. Okay. With your arms like this. Okay. All right. And the outcomes of this test are pretty well correlated with health outcomes. Okay. So the first one, 5 times. If you do the sit to stand 5 yes. time test, if you can do it in less than 15 seconds five times, yep. that's okay. okay. If it takes you longer than 15 seconds, then the evidence suggests that you are at risk for falls. You're at an unacceptably high risk for falling okay. in your activities of daily living. Okay, what about the 30 second version? Okay, so the 30 second version, now we're not measuring how long it takes you to do five. We're timing you for 30 seconds and counting how many times you can get up out of the chair. Right. All right. And if it's less than 10 times, yeah. so if you can't get out of a chair in 30 seconds more than 10 times, you're at increased risk of falls. Okay. And then the one minute test. The one minute one, same idea, count it. If you're less than or equal to about 23, yeah. then you just have decreased endurance compared to your peers. Right. Because the longer test is measuring something slightly different. All right. Okay. Now, the sit to stand test in my house happens around dinner time. After dinner, whosoever turn it is to do the dishes, you yeah. can see the bearing sit to stand test. I feel like that would measure the speed with which yeah. you stand and run. I'm out of there. That sounds like the timed up and go test, which is kind of the next one. That's another one. Okay. Yet, but, but these sit to stand right. tests not only are correlated to falls risks, but they're also correlated to things like chance of hospitalization within a year right. and even mortality. Right, because it's a good measure of your lower body strength, which we've shown before and talked about in other videos, that are good predictors of general health as we age. And this test is great because it's easy to do. You yep. don't need a lot of equipment. It's very reproducible, meaning that if you did the test and then did it again a few minutes later, you're going to get a very similar result. Right. It's inter and intra observer reliability. So if I administer the test on you yep. and then you administer the test, we're going to get the same results on the same individual, right. okay? And if you do it a bunch of times, the observer gets the same result, different observers get the same result. Yeah. And it does correlate well with other tests, like the ones we're going to talk about, yeah. the different types of functional testing that we do. And really, you as an individual are like, well, why does it even matter? Well, it's really more for other people to help identify maybe some areas of opportunity for you or what you have to kind of worry about going forward or things that you can work on yeah. to try to increase your risk of successful aging, which is what we're all trying to do. Just we don't want to just get old. We want to be old and successful and vibrant and active. And you see that more and more nowadays. Okay. And this is an easy test you can do at home to go. see how fit you are. There you go. And measure your fitness as you take measures to increase your fitness. Okay. So the second test is the timed up and go test. Tug. This is the Zal Zal don't want to do dishes That's test. That's right. Timed so up and go. You're sitting in a chair, you get up, 
You Go. walk three meters, yeah. not very far, and then you turn around and sit back down. That's it. So if it takes you longer than 12 seconds to do this, mm -hmm. that's a sign that you're at increased risk of uh, falls, that you have increased risk of frailty. Um, this is degenerative changes in your body. Okay. Okay. The next one's super easy too. It's basically yeah. a stand on one leg test. Yeah. So to the point where we've talked before when I learned stuff for our channel, mm -hmm. I start to do stuff now when I'm working out at home mm -hmm. during my rest between sets, yeah. I stand on one leg. You do. I do. Yeah. So this test, you literally stand on one leg, mm -hmm. which is actually quite hard to do. And if you can do this for less than five seconds, this is a good predictor of falls, which makes sense. It's not yeah. only, as we get older, risk of falls is not just about strength, it's also about mobility and balance. And there are a lot of things that kind of come to tackle our balance as we get older, whether it's your ears, your sight, your cerebellum, whatever. There are a lot of things that start to fail us over time that reduce our risk. So Be careful if you try this one at home because we don't want you to fall trying it. 100%. Have 100%. someone around to catch you if you're going to fall. Yes. The third one is a six minute walk test, which is really an endurance test. Mm -hmm. So it's how far can you walk in six minutes? So a, a pass for this test is 400 meters. So that's walking at about 2.5 um, kilometers per hour. Okay, if yeah. you're under 300 meters, yeah. you are deconditioned, you basically. Are. You yeah. need to get exercising so you can do better at that. Yeah, and then the last test is really interesting. Super easy. Yes, and really predictive. So this test is more predictive of your mortality risk than having high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Incredible. So it's grip strength. So just with a typical hand grip dynamometer. Yeah, this is a bit, the, all the other tests, you don't need any special equipment no. except for a chair and a stopwatch. That's right. Here you need a dynamometer. Right, and so people that have lower grip strength mm -hmm. have a higher risk of death. And it is more predictive than having high cholesterol or high blood pressure. So one thing about these tests is, just like a lot of the, the dementia training tests, so if you, know, if, you t if you study for your dementia test, actually you can learn to get better at it, and then you can almost can trick the test. And then it's not giving you an accurate measure. Right, so same thing for hand grip. So if you really worked on hand grip, just nonstop, all day long, obviously your grip strength will go up. But the rest of your general health, your mobility, your strength is not gonna go up accordingly. Yeah. So it doesn't reduce your risk. So yeah. really the test in isolation is good if you don't train for the test. That's it test in isolation. So and now these, you know. These are common tests that are done yeah. by clinicians to determine your function. And often before surgery, uh, when you're coming to assess to determine how long it's gonna take you to recover, the sit to stand test is one of the most common ones. And to be honest, in the office, I've kind of used this not knowingly, looking back now. Yeah. I know that when I kind of lean out of the exam room where we are, just to our waiting room, which is about, I'd say six meters, mm -hmm. maybe seven, yeah. I say, Mrs. So-and-so, if it takes a long time for that person to get to the exam room, yes. that is pre it's predictive yeah. of, yeah. of a how, more maybe how debilitated they are. So if they have really bad hips or knees, it takes them a yeah. long time to get there. Yeah. If they can do it too quickly, I'm like, maybe you don't need a hip or knee replacement. So I'm kind of using That's that it. test on a daily basis already. Right, and also if the patient's sitting in the chair and then you ask them to get on the examining room oh, table. And, and you're like. Yeah, you just watch them how long it takes to get up and to get off that exam. Or even that. when they get ready to leave. Yeah, that's predictive too, because I see that, I'm like, okay, this person is gonna have a more difficult time recovering from surgery. And some people even need your help. Yeah. Like I literally offered to help, so they're like, no, I yeah. got it, I yeah. got it. But then often using their arms. Yeah. yeah, so these are good ways for you to kind of measure where you're at and maybe target some of your, some of your exercise. That's right. So you know what, my quads are a little bit weak, my balance is a little bit off. It would be cool if some of our viewers would try the 30 second sit to stand test Give yourself 30 seconds and see how many times you can get up out of the chair, leave, not using your arms. Leave a comment. We'll see you kind leave of a who, comment. who's got the most at the stand. It's not a competition. Come it's just on, a Paul, curious. It is. It's a competition. Just curious to see how you do. Compete with yourself and maybe with some of the other people that leave a comment. Be careful. Have someone there with you when you do it. We don't want you to fall when you do this. Okay, go get it. Now you know. I know. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, share it with someone that you think might find it useful, and check out our podcast. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.